Hello, Alf. Oh, you precious. Oh, it's hot. I know. It's so cute. You're so cute. Good boy. Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is, whatever time you are watching this. Um, so this week, no treatment, which is great. I'm feeling good. I did have my appointment with Bart's yesterday. So on Thursday, what would that be? Thursday, the 25th of June. And it was just over the telephone, so I didn't have to go to Bart's, which is nice to not have to drive there. I got my PET scan result and it's a bit, the radiographers at Bart's wouldn't read the PET scan result that I had done in April, I think it was. Yeah, it was April. Um, because apparently PET scan machines are very like specific, a specific tool and if a radiographer isn't familiar with that specific machine, then they won't read the scan results that come out of like another machine that they're not familiar with. So I can't have like a direct comparison between the two. But what the scan at Bart's showed is that there is the lesion on the mastectomy scar, which I know about. I can see it every day. Um, and there is the lymph node involvement, so it's in the armpit, the neck, chest, um, the back under the diaphragm, and then they're unsure about the lungs, like if there is lung involvement, because they said they couldn't tell on the scan if it was inflammatory or like an infection or if it was cancerous cells. Um, I've had this annoying cough lingering for a little while now, and I thought it was to do with um, like hay fever and stuff outside. So they're unsure, they're unable to say whether it's lung involvement or if it's just an infection that I've been dealing with. So that's the PET scan result. That scan will act now as my baseline, so I've started treatment and now we'll compare uh, the next scan result to that one and see if treatment is working, which it will be working. The next PET scan will be after cycle three, not after the third treatment, after cycle three. So it takes like a month to do one cycle. So I've just done cycle one and I have two more cycles to go and then they'll likely do another PET scan then, which is when they will have a look and see that treatment is working. And then I have lots of questions to ask, of course, always full of questions. I wanted to know about my bloods. So with them jumping up after the immunotherapy, she said that they were all within normal ranges, so it wouldn't be a cause for concern and it's fine. It was absolutely fine for them to go to six. If they were to go, above 12 then that would be an issue and I think they would start running some tests so all good that they went up to six and she said to expect for them to decrease as we go on but with my meditations I'm gonna keep them looking healthy and yeah they're not going to be a problem this time oh about the lump you can't really see it if I'm lying down um let's sit up so Oh, you, it's a bit hot, isn't it? <laughs> He's so cute. The lump, so, the in, the in my last video, there was one, that one, which is still there. It hasn't grown. And then on the Sunday, so this one popped up last Saturday, didn't it? Yep. Yeah last Saturday and then I woke up on the Sunday and you can't see it but I can feel it there's an, another small one here so about those she said keep an eye on them if they start to grow or change at all to let them know and then when I'm at Bart's for treatment they can just come down and have a look um, 
but yeah, she didn't seem too worried about them and it could just be an inflammatory response to the treatment. And then I had quite a few other questions, but I won't bore you with all of them. One of them is about oncology nutrition. I wanted to see an oncology nutritionist but it's not some like something that they offer or someone that they have. They have your standard nutritionists, but that's not who I want to speak with. So someone has actually already given me a recommendation to an oncology nutritionist and I will contact them. So this week I've been a little bit stricter with my diet. I know I've mentioned that I'm doing like a sort of vegan thing with no sugar and eating whole foods. But when I say like mostly vegan, I was still eating fish. But this week I've decided no fish, no fish at all. I'm doing vegan properly, properly. And I've found a few new recipes. I've done those this week. On Tuesday, I made a vegan mushroom bolognese, which was very good, even if I do say so myself. And last night I made a chickpea curry, which was also really good. It was quite tangy, it had like a bit of lime in there, but half a chilli as well with the seeds. So it had a kick to it. And um, tonight I'm going to have a go at making some jackfruit kebabs. I'm going to make my own garlic sauce as well. And I've got a few other recipes coming up over the weekend, I think. Yeah. So a fair bit of cooking, trying new things, and just keeping my diet a little bit stricter. Oh, I just thought also I'd cover one very common question that I'm being asked. And um, it's, ah, so cycle one is done. How many more do you have to go? And I don't have an end date. Do not have an end date. It's just if I respond well, then I'll be staying on this treatment for potentially the rest of my life I don't know there's no set number of cycles it's just have the treatment hopefully respond potentially stay on it forever because it's considered life extending it's not a cure so yeah I don't know how many cycles but yeah that's the most common question that I'm being asked even by like nurses and stuff oh so how many have you got to go yeah I don't know all right, that's all from me and little Alf. You. Anyway, that's it from me. I'm just going to sit here and watch Alfie for a couple of hours. See, he's so bloody cute. <laughs>